I'm so glad to visit with you again. I wish I could see you as you're able to see me, and I suppose the time may come in this wonderful mechanized world of ours where that may well be possible. But for now, the best I can do is say I'm glad to be able to be together with you again. I want to tell you something that's on my mind today. I've been reading these last few days, a couple of weeks almost, in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament. And it's a fascinating book, you know, in so many ways. And Jeremiah has more of a personal story to tell uh, than any other prophet. We follow him through his whole preaching enterprise. And uh, most of the time, frankly, it's a difficult job that he has. Some people are called to minister in beautiful and lovely places and in lovely times, comparatively speaking. And some people, on the other hand, have a rendezvous with destiny, as was said uh, two generations ago by a president of the United States. And those people who have a rendezvous with destiny may find their job very difficult. Jeremiah was in that category. Well, the portion I'm thinking about today comes from Jeremiah 36. Uh, he has a message, Jeremiah does, from the Lord for the king, for King Jehoiakim. And uh, his warning is that if the nation will turn to God, it's just possible that still they may avert the judgment and the disaster that is otherwise going to come upon them. And so he writes out, or maybe I should say rather, he dictates his message uh, to his secretary, so to speak, Baruch, one of the great names among minor characters in the Old Testament. Baruch, who takes the message down. Baruch delivers the message to the entourage of the king. And they, when they hear it, know that the king must see this. So they take the message to the king. The king is in his winter room. It's in the ninth month. Uh, there's a fire blazing in the fireplace to keep the room comfortable. As they read this message to the king from the prophet of God, the king has a penknife in his hand, and each page of the scroll that is read to him is then handed to him, and he, with deliberate disregard, cuts the manuscript, the scroll, into pieces and throws them in the fireplace so they'll be burned. Thus it is that he thinks he has gotten rid of the judgment of God that has been predicted for him. The big question is, therefore, what do you do when you get bad news, for example? Or, in this particular instance, what do you do if you get a message from the Lord? Bad news, whether it is from God or just in the whole process of life having nothing directly or indirectly to do with God, when bad news comes, what should we do? Is it enough to cut it up and throw it in the fire? Or should we learn from it? And learning from it, draw close to God and find solutions that we need. But in any event, when it comes as a message from God, you'd better know that tearing it up, burning it up, shredding it in a machine is not going to change the message. What a fool King Jehoiakim was. He thought that if he burned the message, he had burned its judgment. He had done nothing of the kind. There's a kind of humorous end to the story. Well, not an end, but the end of what I'm talking with you about today. Uh, when the word got back to uh, the prophet Jeremiah, what the king had done with his message, Jeremiah simply sat down and began to dictate another message to Baruch, the same one, dictated it again. That was not going to be destroyed. His sermon was not going to be lost. And then what I think is a little bit amusing, I like it, is the last verse of it all. It says simply that uh, he redictated all the words of the scroll that King Jehoiakim had burned in the fire. And then this, and many similar words were added to them. So what did the king do with the message? It came back again and with many similar words added. You can't get rid of God 
by destroying the message. You can't get rid of God's prodding of the conscience by turning your conscience off for a while. There are simply more words added to it later on, and you have more than ever to deal with. The answer is quite simple, therefore. When God has a word for us, we do well to accept it, cherish it in our hearts, and be changed because of it. That's what's on my mind today, along with saying to you, God bless you.